Uh, thank you, Leslie. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Leslie, for uh, inviting us from Iowa State University to share uh, results of our long-term uh, uh, manure study. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think you had requested us to share this 20-year uh, uh, poultry manure and uh, water quality study. Uh, but I would like to say uh, for poultry manure, we used a hand layer manure. And uh, we do have a research team, and Natasha, uh, Dan Anderson, Michelle Sp Supir, and I. Now, this study has been funded by Iowa Air Council for continuous 20, 20 years. Now, I would say uh, they are still uh, uh, funding it, and now we are in the 23rd year. So I will uh, share uh, results with you uh, from this study. Um, uh, probably all of you know that uh, uh, Ohio used to be number one egg uh, producing state. So Iowa is now, uh, that means we are producing 15, 16 billion eggs a year. At the same time, uh, we do uh, produce uh, plenty of uh, uh, poultry manure and uh, that uh, brings us challenges uh, uh, how we can manage it. Um, so, Essentially, um, uh, the hypothesis uh, for this study was if we manage the manure properly, it's a good resource for commercial fertilizer uh, for crop production. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, we have plenty uh, of manure. At the same time, um, our uh, Iowa soils, our Iowa landscape is different. Uh, we are in a rolling topography and uh, uh, much of the lowland areas, uh, especially less uh, soils are uh, artificially drained. Uh, so we do have sub -sub subsurface drainage uh, for, uh, uh, I would say almost 50% of the uh, uh, crop production, uh, row crop production. So if uh, in the uh, uh, spring uh, uh, you look at any landscape before crops are planted, uh, you can see uh, pretty good markings of uh, tile drains. And um, so, but uh, they do bring water out of the fields, uh, which contains some of the chemicals we are using, either manure or commercial fertilizers or some of the uh, uh, pesticides. Uh, so although artificial drainage is a requirement, a requirement means without that, our fields will be uh, flooded. We will be under water law conditions. So keep the production system the way it is, uh, I would say highly intensive. Uh, the, uh, soils do need drainage, uh, but then we need to look into some of the uh, uh, pollution potential from these drains. Uh, we have found uh, that uh, if uh, we keep on uh, draining uh, excessive amount of nutrients, uh, from uh, uh, crop uh, crop lands, uh, they do result in uh, eutrophication, uh, which uh, could lead to um, hypoxic conditions, which means a lack of oxygen, and that does affect aquatic life uh, uh, in the rivers, uh, lakes, or even all the way to Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this paper was published uh, back in 2018. Um, uh, I think uh, <clears throat> they use the data. Uh, essentially, uh, during uh, our uh, uh, poultry manure study between 1999 and 2016, and uh, this data shows that uh, somewhere between 10% uh, to 52% of uh, nitrogen we are applying on the fields, it ends up into the Mississippi River, which uh, eventually drains to uh, Gulf of Mexico. So sometime the water quality studies we are doing, uh, especially in the Midwest, our um, uh, one of the goals is to minimize uh, uh, hypoxic zone in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so I, the overall goals uh, for this study was to see if we can compare um, the poultry manure applied at the same rate uh, compared to commercial fertilizer, which is in our case was uh, anhydrous ammonia or UN. Um, and looking at the effect um, uh, under, a, we used the two tillage system initially, uh, chisel plow and no-till and uh, a corn soybean production system for first 10 years 
And for these remaining 10 years, we are using continuous corn production system. And we are looking at the effect on soil quality, water quality, crop yields, and we are also looking at uh, the economics of the uh, production system. Uh, so this uh, slide is a bit crowded, uh, but uh, it gives you on the left-hand side uh, uh, the rates we applied, 150 pounds per acre of uh, poultry manure. And we thought if uh, farmers uh, or the producers don't have much choice, they have to double the application up to 300 pounds per acre, what could be the uh, water quality impacts. And we compared with only one rate of uh, uh, commercial fertilizer, 150 pounds per acre, simply um, because number of plots we had available at, uh, for this study. And we did this study for 10 years. And after 10 years, we converted uh, into continuous corn because we thought, uh, let us see how uh, poultry manure applications, uh, they affect the overall system uh, under continuous corn. Um, and we were applying only in spring um, and just to make sure that uh, the timing of application is uh, known to everybody. Uh, we have published papers. If you need uh, details uh, or, or, or about these studies or you need data uh, in detail, I think you can go to any of these publications which are available online. And uh, I think you should have no difficulty in getting access to these publications. Uh, so let me explain to you, like I said, uh, we had uh, only 11 uh, uh, and 12 plots and uh, we had uh, uh, corn soybean rotation. So we decided um, that each plot was drained by a single tie line. Half the plot we kept under corn and other half the plot we kept under soybeans. So we can rotate the corn soybean system within the same plot. It was not a perfect system. Uh, this is how we decided. And it worked out pretty well. I think uh, then the next year we rotated uh, where the corn was, we planted to soybeans and where soybeans were in the same plot, we brought corn. Uh, but the fertilizer was applied only to the corn uh, area. And uh, soil types, um, uh, we have less hills, basically um, loam to silty clay loam at the bottom. Uh, so those are the soil types. Uh, between 2010 and 2017, uh, we reduced the application rate uh, for poultry manure. We came down to 100 pounds per acre. Uh, one of the reasons was that our phosphorus was accumulating uh, in the fields in these plots. And we thought, let us try a lesser application and see what the impact could be. And uh, we had thought about applying uh, poultry manure on the basis of uh, phosphorus uh, application, but eventually we decided let's uh, stay in terms of uh, what uh, nitro the requirements are. Um, so, and uh, for the, uh, uh, these are continuous corn and on the high side, uh, we used uh, 200 pounds per acre uh, for the next 10 years. So you can look at the this aerial view uh, for the first 10 years, you could see the corn soybean rotation. Uh, soybeans were planted late on the right hand side is continuous corn. Uh, so all the uh, plots is uh, under continuous corn. Uh, we did had a pretty good uh, uh, automated uh, monitoring system, monitoring system, and um, uh, I will give you a bit of detail. Uh, we had um, a four-foot uh, cistern uh, where we had a sump pump, and uh, we uh, let it let the water pond to a certain level, and then pumped out uh, back to the outlet. Uh, but before um, every uh, um, a volume of water was pumped out. We took a water sample through the orifice tube, which we had installed in the delivery tube. And uh, that gave us a um, uh, pretty good uh, uh, kind of uh, flow weighted uh, uh, concentrations. Yeah. Uh, but once a week, uh, we uh, sent our students to take uh, manual uh, readings uh, just to make sure they get a good experience. At the same time, we wanted to uh, make sure that our data is coming in a correct way. Uh, one of the challenge in poultry manure application, and we found in the soil manure also, um, is a uniform application of manure uh, at, for every inch of land. Uh, we tried different techniques, uh, but uh, uh, then we were incorporating uh, within 24 hours. But uh, let me share with you uh, the data. Uh, some of you may not be able to read it. 
But um, over the first 10 years, there's a high variability in terms of actual application rates. We were applying uh, plastic shields, uh, maybe 70, uh, 75 feet long, uh, 30 feet wide, and we were collecting how much manure was coming on those plastic sheets uniformly. And uh, that also affects NPK application uh, per unit. But on the average, uh, when you look at 10-year uh, average, we wanted to apply 150 pounds. We ended up in like 180 uh, for um, uh, doubling the rate. So we were a little more than 300 pounds per acre. Um, uh, so when you look at uh, for 10 years yields, um, uh, overall, uh, uh, when you look at um, 150 pounds of UN compared to poultry manure, uh, yields are very similar. Um, uh, statistically, there was no difference, uh, but poultry manure, um, slightly better yields, uh, but uh, with uh, double the application of manure, like uh, 300 pounds per acre, uh, these units are given kilograms, but approximately they are not very different. Um, uh, yields were higher and they were significantly higher. And, uh, but soybean yields were significantly higher uh, than the UN application at the same rate. Uh, this one gives you a little bit more data uh, compared um, uh, corn yields uh, for the first five years, then uh, first 10 years, then uh, first uh, five years uh, uh, for the continuous corn. Uh, so these are the numbers, uh, but not very different what I just said. Uh, but what uh, thing was very clear that um, uh, in continuous corn, uh, yields were uh, better uh, under higher application of uh, uh, poultry manure. Um, reason uh, could be uh, that uh, under single application, we were down to 100 pounds per acre, and that could be less amount for uh, continuous corn. Uh, let me go further, I think. Uh, uh, then uh, soybean yields, I think uh, very similar, but uh, one thing we are uh, uh, finding that uh, compared to UN, uh, soybean yields are uh, better. Uh, in terms of the total nitrate lot losses, in terms of nitrate as N, uh, we are finding uh, more you apply, uh, more you're likely to get uh, through the tie line. Like uh, under higher application of 300 pound per acre, you are getting somewhere between uh, 25 to 28, uh, whereas uh, under uh, under uh, single application, which I call 150 pounds per acre, around 15 uh, pounds uh, or kilograms per hectare. But um, uh, when you look compared to UN, uh, definitely uh, poultry manure uh, losses were lower, significantly lower compared to uh, UN at the same application rate. Um, in terms of um, uh, phosphorus loss, uh, uh, you could see the application uh, rates and uh, uh, how uh, they're showing. Uh, for soil, uh, it's an accumulating factor. And um, it's very clear uh, that uh, uh, when you're applying um, more manure, uh, there's a large amount of accumulation uh, taking place in the field. But uh, when you are going to continuous corn, you are seeing even much higher a level of accumulating uh, in the uh, soil. And uh, these are the uh, typically in the top 15 uh, centimeters or six, top six inches. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, phosphorus losses uh, through the subsurface drain, it's not much. Um, uh, it's, um, um, Greg has shared some numbers in the earlier presentation. Our losses are very, uh, very small. Uh, we did uh, for uh, three years, we had a PhD student. Uh, so we had interest um, to look at some of the uh, bacteria, uh, E. coli. And um, we did find um, in the uh, subsurface drainage. But again, uh, the mechanism uh, for uh, bacteria transport to tile drains was through larger uh, pores, macro pores, we call it. Uh, could be fractures or could be larger macro pores. And it happens uh, immediately after rainfall. Uh, so it shows the concentrations here. Uh, when you look at uh, on the average, um, uh, we are seeing uh, in a wet year, and we are seeing uh, quite a few cycles of wet year uh, in Iowa this year, uh, because um, 
uh, for climate change, you might say we are seeing uh, frequent uh, flooding events. So during the wet years, you see more uh, bacteria transport to uh, uh, drains compared to the uh, dry years. Uh, so we do have a, a conclusion for the first 10 years, uh, which uh, I have concluded pretty well, that uh, we could expect with poultry manure better crop yields. And uh, compared to uh, UN at the same application rate, uh, uh, lower uh, nitrate and uh, phosphorus losses. Uh, we do uh, have uh, data on soil health, which uh, we, uh, it was of particular interest to us that uh, soil health uh, does get better uh, because of the uh, manure uh, system. And uh, our data is showing uh, for organic matter as well as uh, organic carbon that um, with the poultry manure applications, our aggregate size is getting better as well as uh, there's a more uh, carbon sequestration in the system. Um, in terms of uh, uh, soil P, I have already shared data, uh, but uh, much of the P is uh, within top one foot of the soil profile, uh, which is very natural. And uh, when you look at some of the bars, uh, most of it, it is in the top six inches. Uh, crop yields I have shared with you pretty well, but uh, when you look uh, side by side, you can put the data for first 10 years and the corn soybean rotation, and then uh, data for uh, continuous corn. Uh, yields are um, slightly lower uh, under continuous corn, uh, and uh, that uh, possibly is the result of lower applications of um, uh, uh, N, N value for manure application. Uh, we did some economic analysis. Uh, uh, we are not economists, but we did take help uh, from uh, faculty from uh, economics. And uh, we did find out we had several assumptions, uh, but one conclusion was coming very obvious that uh, um, for soybeans, uh, manure does give us a positive benefit cost ratio uh, for other system uh, for the corn, I, uh, still it was less than one. So there is a little bit uh, better edge uh, for soybean production systems in terms of uh, uh, production cost. Um, on the average, I'm now concluding, uh, I'm at the end. Um, when you look at uh, corn soybean uh, rotation phase, we are seeing 11% uh, uh, low nitrate um, uh, loss, uh, compared to continuous corn, 13% uh, when we are applying poultry manure uh, compared to the UN, okay. Um, we do have uh, uh, data in terms of concentrations um, uh, uh, for individual years uh, in the uh, tile water and uh, losses are, uh, this is simply showing uh, losses are directly proportioned to the rainfall amount, uh, more rainfall occurs more losses are going to take place. So hydrology, in addition to our production systems, uh, plays a uh, pretty important role uh, in these studies. Uh, and similar sort of uh, situation we are seeing uh, in the fast force losses um, uh, relatively um, for the first 10 years and other 10 years. But when you look at the vertical axis, uh, these are uh, not very large losses and uh, they are within the water quality standards that we have. Uh, major findings, uh, soybean yields we found are 10% higher with the poultry manure. Uh, corn yields are very similar, and uh, but uh, corn yields are 24% higher with the poultry manure under continuous uh, uh, corn uh, phase. Um, so all we can tell from this study that uh, poultry manure does have economic benefits uh, for the production systems. Uh, we do have implications, but if we manage the poultry manure well, I think uh, uh, we can uh, do uh, pretty well in terms of uh, production uh, and in terms of maintaining our water quality uh, in the uh, rivers and the uh, ponds and lakes. Thank you very much.